that's actually really interesting. So do you do we think cold fusion or CFML has changed from from back then to today? Because what you just said, Michi, was like, you know, back then cold fusion had all those things that in other tech you had to pay for. Is it still the same or have things kind of like, you know, it's come think- closer to no, it's still the same because you you what you get in uh, in uh, Lucy is is really uh, so much functionality that is included uh, all the mail stuff, all the API stuff, yeah. all you know um, things like things like that are included already, like um, simple things to generate RSS feeds or stuff like that. That is all included for free. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Welcome back to the show. I'm here with Kai Koenig and Mitchy Hat, and we're going to talk about everything CF Camp. So it's the amazing CFML conference in Europe coming up in October, and we're going to look at uh, where it is, some history on it, and what does it cover, and all the exciting speakers and topics. So let's get going. So welcome, guys. Hi, welcome. Hey, Michelle. So those people who, uh, who haven't come across CF Camp, which is hard to believe because it, it's been going for years now. How many years has it been going? Uh, meanwhile, we have the 10-year anniversary. Wow. So, um, yeah, it's, it's um, already really a long time. Are you doing something special for the 10-year anniversary? Or? Uh, well, well um, <laughs> we did all the years, and I think it will be, uh, again, a very great show. Uh, what we are uh, happy to have for this year again is the famous uh, Code Masters in the Evening, which is uh, always a fantastic show. And mm-hmm. this year we really have a fantastic lineup of uh, speakers and talks. So it will be really again a f- fantastic event, I guess. Well, that's great. So basically, CF Camp is a Cold Fusion conference. You know, originally focused on Lucy, uh, now covers Adobe Cold Fusion as well. Is, is that right, or have I misunderstood what it is? So um, it started. It started with the idea of bringing a conference to uh, to Europe, and uh, we first talked to uh, to Lucy about that. Um, this was oh yeah, ten years ago, and we realized that um, it's not about Lucy, it's about really CFML. And this includes uh, Adobe, uh, which means for the first year, uh, we, I think we haven't had Adobe as a sponsor for this conference. This was a one day event with um, I think about 30 or 40 people. And from the next year on, um, Adobe and Lucy have been a, a part of the, the C, uh, CF camp. Mm. And it was really, we have uh, the focus on CF Camp is not talking about a product, it's talking about a language. So this means we have a lot of things that are running in both worlds. And we have a lot of things that are around CFML. It's not only about coding or, or CFML stuff. It's about tools and techniques you, are, you need to use uh, around CFML. So how about monitoring? How about uh, log file analysis uh, and security and stuff like this? Cool. So is Lucy bigger in in Europe than in the US, do you think, Kai? Or I would personally say yes. Um, and it, I mean, we don't really have any actual numbers because obviously um, Adobe is not providing specific information on how many licenses they sell in various regions or at all. But from a pure community observation point of view, anecdotally, I would say Lucy is very popular in the German market, in the UK, um, in Central Europe in general. I would also say Lucy is more prevalent in Australia and New Zealand than Adobe Cold Fusion. Um, And to me, it seems like that in the US, it's more or less vice versa. It seems to me that in the US, Cold Fusion is used by a lot of large companies, corporates, Fortune 500, US federal government, et cetera, et cetera. So that seems to be one of the focus areas where Adobe Cold Fusion is much bigger than Lucy. And for whatever reason, Lucy apparently never took 
off that much in in the US market, I think. Mm. Well, that's interesting. So <clears throat> speaking of Lucy and, and Adobe Cold Fusion, how does CF Camp compare to, to the Adobe CF Summit that's happening just a few weeks earlier? Um, the main difference between CF Summit and uh, CF Camp is that I think we have um, a wider spread kind of, of uh, of talks and and techniques. So while CF Summit is focusing on um, pure CFML stuff and uh, things about cold box and how do we program and what is new in, uh, in the latest Adobe version and so on, we are trying to cover other things too. So for example, we have talks about um, developing um, Android applications about uh, security, about UI and UX um, and stuff like this. So I think it's more for the developers itself um, in a way of getting information and in, um, about okay, what's what's this around CFML and what can I use for specific things. So there is an interesting German saying, basically, that is basically in German, it's called like über den Tellerrand schauen. So it literally means, if you translate it, it means something like you have to look beyond the, the area of your plate. So you need to look at other things to, be, to keep up to date and to get inspiration and to learn supplementary technologies. And you can't just really stick with one technology and one platform nowadays from from our point of view and that's makes it's common sense right like even if you are like a core web developer using cfml on the back end at some point it's quite likely that you will need to do some javascript coding for example so you should know something about that or you will build an api um, that is used by a mobile app so you need to at least know the basics of api development and there are tons of you know topics like that that are very important to be taught to people and be explained to people. That makes a lot of sense. I'm going to have to ask you to spell that thing in the show notes because there's no way I can write a German word with more than ten. Tell her run. But while you're doing that, where is CF Camp this year? So okay. this year, this year we are again at the fantastic Marriott Hotel in Freising next to the Munich Airport. Um, so we um, we are here for the second year. Uh, we uh, were looking for a bigger uh, venue since uh, the airport uh, conference venue was um, just too small. So we, we hit the limit in number of uh, attendees. And so we were looking for, um, uh, for a, a bigger venue and we found the really fantastic uh, Marriott Hotel. And uh, it will be there again this year. So that's very convenient for people coming in uh, from other places. Yes, totally. And it was, it was one thing we absolutely wanted to have is the venue and the hotel rooms at the same place, because this was one of the problems we had at the uh, um, venue at the airport, because it was just the conference venue. And if you wanted to um, bring stuff to your hotel room or change your shirt or whatever, it, it was just not possible. And here you can just say, okay, hey, give me five minutes. Uh, I'm uh, going up to my room and coming back in um, shortly. So uh, this is a real big improvement for uh, the attendees because it makes it much, much more comfortable for them. The other and thing then, was quite... oh, sorry, sorry, go ahead, Kai. Okay. Um, the other thing worthwhile mentioning is Freising is a really nice little historic city. It's basically the next city to the airport. And they have stuff like, you know, an old cathedral. They have a huge culture around beer brewing, funny enough. So basically Germany's top one, the best university for beer brewing is in Freising. So there are lots of pubs and like lots of cultural things you can do just besides attending the conference as well. Cool. So is CF Camp only for German CFers or? No, 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 definitely not. So of course the most people are coming from, um, from Germany or uh, let's say Europe because it's uh, much more easy to travel to Munich from, from example, uh, Italy or, or the UK instead of going to the United States. But we have a lot of people coming from really uh, completely across the ball. So we have people coming from India, we have people coming from uh, New Zealand, we have people coming from the US, uh, 
Um, so Australia. Australia, yes. Um, so there is, are a lot of um, countries and languages um, at, the, at the conference. And that's uh, quite a lot of fun. So, of course, the main language is uh, English. Um, but, um, well, I guess if you want to talk to someone in, in Australia dialect, shouldn't <laughs> be a problem. All right. Well, cool. And for those who have never flown to Munich, it's a very large airport. It's very easy to get flights to Munich from anywhere in yeah. the world. Um, it is, yes. I, I'd compare it to Chicago O'Hare Airport. It's that kind of size. Um, yeah, it's basically the yeah. number two hub after Frankfurt in Germany, I think. Yeah. So wait, wait, when is CF Camp? I mean, I'm excited to, to when it's happening. Uh, CF Camp is on uh, 17th and 18th of October. So um, exactly in one month, we have the days before some uh, pre-conference program. So there is uh, the pre-site con about the pre-site CMS platform. There is um, some trainings from uh, the code box, uh, uh, auto solutions for about cold box and test box. Uh, we also have a very interesting half day talks um, and training about uh, Logstash from uh, the Elastic, Elastic Search Group. We have um, another one about getting into Linux as a development platform. And this is quite interesting. So if you are thinking about, um, let's get rid of my Windows equipment and uh, get into uh, Linux. So this is your chance um, to see what you need to do. Yeah, so the, the pre-conference training is a general Linux introduction. It's not specifically yeah. for the, or to get into development. But, you know, if you've never tried Linux and you just want to get a feeling for how that works and like, you know, trying Linux on a desktop computer, then this is a really cool thing to attend for half a day and just get like an initial feeling for if that could work for you or not. And those pre-conference classes are 49 euros uh, extra for that half day or full day? Yes, it's just about covering the food for uh, in the room. That's it. So... Well, that's a, a deal, particularly for PresideCon. What, did, for the folks who don't know what Preside is, what, what is Preside? Uh, well, Preside is a, is a really interesting um, application framework where you can easily build up your own applications. Um, it has a, a kind of management system included. It has a lot of features to create stuff around that. So if you, if you need... Um, uh, some internal things with website users and uh, mechanism for uh, for benefits or stuff like that. Uh, you can really easily do that, and uh, it's meanwhile it is it is used um, less for for content management system uh, for for just showing the website. It's more about um, handling the data in the background. So we have a lot of applications where we are just um, having internal applications that do not use the CMS, but you're doing all your CRM stuff and, and stuff like that in, um, in Preside. The interesting thing with Preside as well is it's built on top of Codebox and it only runs on Lucy because the, <laughs> the Preside team basically, they have at some point made a decision to say, we want to use certain language features and certain optimizations that basically work fine on Lucy, but we can't do that cross platform support or cross server support, um, you know, dealing with two slightly different languages. So they decided to go with Lucy. And it's open source, I, I yeah. believe. And it's open source, yes, that's right. And, and I interviewed the uh, creators of Preside, and I, I think it has some quite interesting um, you know, the way it works when you're using it as a developer is, is pretty cool. Yeah, it's really simple to use. If you need a new developer um, working on Preside, you're not going to teach him CFML. You're just going to, to teach him the Preside uh, API, API and, and yeah. uh, commands. So that's really, really simple thing to get into. Cool. And then you said you mentioned Autis is running some commercial classes for the two days prior to CF Camp. Uh, yes, that's true. Tell us a bit more about those. Well, um, Orchard Solutions is doing this uh, for, for years, meanwhile. So they're giving uh, every year uh, some trainings in front of CF Camp. 
about cold box, get into cold box, uh, uh, cold box professional stuff. So for this year, they have a cold box from API from hero to superhero, and they have uh, they have a test box uh, training for two days. And this is really quite interesting and a very, very good way to get this training uh, and not to fly in the US if you're based in somewhere here in Europe. So that's, I can't imagine uh, why someone in Europe wouldn't want to fly to the US. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, basically the thing I think is um, it's really a long trip. And if you have to decide to go to the US, uh, have the jet lag, and, and really, if you're going from Europe to the to the US, you have to stay there for at least a week to um, to see something in the US. And if you're, but if you're coming from from Zurich, from Switzerland to Munich, so hey, okay, well, I'm getting here again next week, so that's that's not a big deal. Cool. So, what for the main CF camp? event what what comes in in the ticket if you buy that so if you're going to buy the, the ticket you get uh, two days of uh, the conference including really basically everything over the day so includes all the meals all the um, uh, all the drinks uh, we have fresh pressed orange juice all over the day we have a, a special machine an orange juice machine where they just put in throw in the fresh oranges and your put your glass into it and get fresh pressed orange juice. That is, was a really a highlight the last year. Um, uh, yeah, fantastic There's food all over the day. Proper coffee, which is really important. Proper <laughs> coffee, that's right. <laughs> that's is, right. Is it some slur on American coffee? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's a slur yeah. against filter coffee in general. <laughs> 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 and it the ticket also includes the the evening show uh, the codemasters and uh, dinner including a uh, fantastic german beer uh, from the local brewery uh, so yeah absolutely a deal yeah and the wow. conference good yeah, event is usually worth it as well so mm. for example last year people got um, one of those little yubi keys I don't know if yeah. you know that they're like little security tokens, like mm. in, like something like this, basically. Mm. You can use them to log into websites or log into your computer instead of using passwords. Mm. So that was like a really cool thing that was just worth, I don't know how much they are, 40, 30, 40 euros by itself. Yeah. And in the previous year, we all had got like a Raspberry Pi Mini, I think. Yes, mini oh. servers, yes. Yeah, so there have been like various really cool Shrek things in the conference nice. goodie bag. Now, do you get the recordings of the sessions or? Yes, we do. So last year we had this the first time. Uh, we have a professional company doing the recordings of all sessions and uh, every attendee will get the sessions afterwards for free. And uh, so if you if you say, oh, bad luck. So the two sessions I'm interested in are in the parallel tracks. So that's uh, not a big thing because you just can uh, grab the video and uh, see what you missed. That's great. That sounds uh, very good. And also, even if you attend a session, sometimes you don't always, you know, remember every single piece from the session. Oh yes, sir. So uh, great to be able to refer to that. So, uh, how many people came last year? Last year we had about uh, 140 or 150 people all over, including the speakers and uh, staff around it, and. Um, we are growing from year to year. So when I think back, when we started with uh, 30 or 40 people, as already mentioned, uh, for one day, um, meanwhile, uh, 150 people for two days is really um, good, really good for us. Well, it's over a month away. How many people have signed up already? Currently, we have about uh, 120 people, I think. So hope we are going to hit the the number we, we had last year. So I'm still missing some uh, usual suspects. <laughs> and so um, I think we, we're getting the name, almost the same, at least the, the same number of uh, attendees. So uh, let's just talk about who's speaking and, and maybe Kai, you can tell us how, because you're involved in the committee that picks who speaks. So you're the all powerful um, speaker selector. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't but, say all powerful speaker selector, but yeah, we had, we had like a, an open process for the first time for CF camp this year. Mm. So um, one of the drivers behind that was that 
I think, you know, we all believe in the idea of to grow a conference and to make it, you know, interesting for new people and for people from all, you know, sorts of, you know, walks of life, you need to kind of present a panel of speakers that is, that represents the diversity that you want. And if you want to increase diversity, the most common thing or the most, the easiest thing to do is let's run a proper call for paper and anonymize it as much as possible so that oh. everyone who selects talks can do that in the most possible unbiased way. So, and that's what we try to basically do for this CF camp for the first time. Um, and I would personally say that while it wasn't perfect, it was really successful as a, as a minimum. And I'm pretty sure Michi would agree with me on that, basically. Yeah, we have like totally. an incredibly diverse panel of speakers and we have significant amounts of new speakers that haven't popped up at a CF camp before or that haven't popped up in the Cold Fusion CFML related speaker community at all before. And that's really interesting, right? Because I think having that will in future years for future iterations, then hopefully attract new people, attract other speakers, attract new speakers, and you know, increase the, the, the diversity and the different range of topics and people we want to speak even more. So what we did is we, we have used a tool, tool called Paper Call. Um, it's basically an online-based solution to manage call for papers for events. Um, put a call for papers out there and gave everyone a chance to submit a talk or multiple talks. That actually will change the next year because we had one person, and I'm not naming them, um, who submitted 17 talks. And that was a bit too much from that one person from my point of view. So next year we will have some limits saying like everyone can submit like four or five talks and then it's a cutoff or something like that. Um, but that being said, after we got all the talks, what we basically did among the people in the committee was to anonymously rate the talks. So basically only on the description and the title of the talk, we would go through the list of talks, read all the paper suggestions and say, yeah, I like that. Um, I like that a lot, or I don't like that, doesn't fit the conference, yada, yada, yada. So we would basically do that on a one to five rating. And we had a target number of talks we want in mind that was around 20 to 25. And basically at the end of the call for papers, when everything was submitted, everything was rated, then at some stage to curate the panel and to curate the talks, we de-anonymized <clears throat> the sessions. And that is really important at some point because, you know, you might end up having 10 talks on AngularJS, but we are really not an AngularJS conference, right? So um, you can only select one or two on a certain topic potentially. And then at some stage, it was kind of really interesting to see who submitted talks, what is their experience with a certain platform or certain technology, and how can we put it all together um, that it makes sense. Very cool. So who, who actually speaking? Well, there's a whole list of names on the website. I mean, I could read through the whole <laughs> list. Uh, well, tell, list tell me of... who you're excited about seeing this year. I'm mostly excited about all the new people, to be honest. Because I know for some of them, it will be even their first conference presentation. And that's really cool. You know, that's really nice to see so many new speakers who just give it a try. You know, they have something, they have a story to tell and they have like the experience to share and we give them a platform to do that. And that's really amazing. I find personally, right? Like, for example, there's Jennifer, she's coming from Australia. This is not her first conference talk, but that's her first time in Europe. So she's coming to CF camp make it a bit of a holiday around the whole trip. Um, but, you know, she's never been to Munich before or to Central Europe or something like that. And at the same time, has a chance to talk about a lot of really interesting things about internationalization of web apps, you know, and why you should care about those kind of things. Or, for example, um, we have Miguel and Lara. They are a couple that do a lot of mobile development. 
So they are talking about Flutter, which is a new, new cross-platform mobile technology from Google, which looks really, really interesting. Um, and where I could see that platform having a great future. And that is, again, like it's one of those topics that is not directly related to cold fusion development or to CFML development, but it's something people need to know about because they might be required to build a backend for a Flutter app in six months. You know, at least they should know the basics of what they communicate with. Very cool. And just to mention some of the more famous names, I know Charlie Earhart's coming and Nolan Irk yep. and uh, Gert yeah. Brands from the Lucy Association. Yeah, uh, Charlie is talking about um, a topic related to monitoring. It's not about Fusion Reactor this year or like um, about the hidden gems that he quite often talks about, hidden gems in cold fusion. This year it's about comparing different monitoring solutions, which I think will be really interesting. Um, yeah, we've got Matt Gifford, for example, who's also very well known in the European CFML community. Um, we have Eric Peterson, who's on team box, essentially. And I think Eric, Eric and, um, and Brad are doing the two pre-conference workshops from orders. Is that right, Michi? I yes, that's so. correct. Yeah. Brad is doing one and Eric is doing the other one, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, you know, there are like a whole bunch of like old experienced speakers. I mean, not old from an age point of view, but experienced. <laughs> and then we've got a whole pile of newbies and that's really cool. That's great. So let's talk a bit more about some of the, the topics. Um, what, what are the topic areas that CF Camp covers? So when we, as a committee, sorry, I, Michi, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, go okay. ahead. <laughs> so when we, as a committee looked at the talks, we wanted to make sure that we have a decent amount of what we would call core CFML. Because at the end of the day, CF Camp is a CFML conference, right? We're not a generic web developers conference. So pretty much the idea was, if you have no interest in anything else but CFML, for whatever reason, you just don't care about anything else, then you should still have a good time at the event. So about, I don't know, 12, 11, 12, 13 talks are about what I would call core CFML. That could be libraries, that could be tools like, I don't know, CFLint or Coldbox, um, preside, testing certain libraries or certain applications in ColdFusion, you name it. But they are directly related to your day-to-day -day CFML development. And then around that, there is a layer of other things that are kind of related to CFML. That might be, you know, mobile web, that might be cross-platform mobile app development, that might be general web development, JavaScript frameworks, JavaScript libraries, um, user interfaces, UX, um, testing, internationalization, and a few other things. And then the other last kind of layer is what I would probably paraphrase with infrastructure. Yeah. That could be deployment, tooling around deployment, like version control, continuous integration, security, um, and tons of other topics in this kind of area, basically. So I, I see there's a long list of really cool topics. Are there any that, that stand out? And I'll, I'll include the whole list in the show notes. And, and of course, you can find them on the CF Camp website too. But is there, are there any that you're particularly excited about, either of you? Yeah, personally, I'm very excited about the one um, about the Firebug tool. Uh, so the Firefox, uh, the uh, Firefox dev tools um, are very, very important for us developers to find out what is happening in the generated code. And what I'm really proud about is that um, uh, one of my colleagues is giving this talk, uh, Sebastian Zartner. He's, uh, he was the main developer, one of the main developers for Firebug uh, years ago in uh, Firefox, the really fantastic extensions. And he's talking about uh, why Firebug had to die and why the dev tools are not as bad as you might think. Because uh, people really often say, hey, I want back Firebug. But uh, he's going to show why the Fire, uh, Firefox DevTools are really fantastic. 
And uh, the second thing I'm uh, really interested in personally is the continuous documentation. This sounds very, very interesting. I, uh, to be honest, I have no idea what, uh, uh, what uh, he will be talking about that. But uh, what I learned from uh, uh, Luis Machano for Mortal Solutions is documentation is very important. Very, yes. Yeah, and then if you're into behavior development, driven development, you're kind of writing the test cases ahead of time. So why not write mm. some of the documentation that ahead of time or as you go? Yeah. The, the con continuous documentation proposal was really interesting when we talked about it in the committee as well, because everyone was like, we have no idea what that is. We had, you know, no one had ever heard of that concept for a start. And everyone was kind of, or most people were kind of really curious, like, yeah, we should just take that as a talk because we all want to know what it actually is and how you would do that in the first place. <laughs> cool. And I see there are the talks on security and Vue.js and creating REST APIs, migrating databases. Um, yeah, the, the talk about CF migrations is really interesting from my point of view as well. Um, CF migrations is a tool that it's not about migrating databases as much. It's similar to what in Ruby on, uh, Ruby, what you would do with database up and downgrades together with your code. So you would in, in Rails, you would write a database migration if your schema changes or your data changes, and you would commit that with your code so that people can, while they um, you know, update their code repository, with all the changes you've made, they would also have database migrations to get their database up to the, to the expected um, schema or the expected lookup table content. And CF migrations is kind of an effort to do that for CFML. And I've just used that or started using that in one of my projects and it's so nice. It's such a useful little thing that I can quite easily write those migrations now in either SQL or in an OO way, um, and then just commit them with my code and all my co-developers get my changes. They can just apply my migrations and everything is done. And you don't have to, you know, like do database backups or ship patch files back and forth and stuff like that. Wow, that sounds really cool. And I see this, this is a talk on synchronous and asynchronous coding in Cold Fusion. Uh, progressive web app, mouseless development, you've got that situation. So lots of different things um, in there. So I think it's uh, amazing. I, I think you, your mind is going to be blown if you're a Cold Fusion developer and you come to CF Camp. Yes, I this think happened. people will enjoy it, yeah. Yeah, totally. So this, this happened the, the years before. I, I talked to so many people that said, wow, I wasn't aware that this is possible or that this tool exists or, or that's a great technique that I'm, I'm going to try to need to get into. So this is the, what, we, what we want to have for the community. Wow. So you also mentioned you, ha you have a whole bunch of sponsors. Who, who's sponsoring? You mentioned Lucy and Adobe are sponsors. Uh, any other sponsors? Yes, we have, uh, we have Lucy and Adobe as uh, Platinum sponsors. For this year, we have DistroKit also as a Platinum sponsor. Um, they put their whole business on uh, uh, CFML uh, stuff. Um, we have uh, the guys from Elastic as sponsor. We have uh, Pixlate as sponsor from, from uh, Preside. We have uh, some others that are all related to CFML in a way. For example, Fusion Reactor, um, uh, Integralis uh, with Fusion Reactor, uh, with the Monitor Solution, and so on. Well, and they're, they're based in Germany, so very easy. Yes, <laughs> they are based in Germany, in, indeed. So they have really a short trip to, to Munich. Cool. There are quite a few companies actually sponsoring that are based in Germany. I mean, it's Integral, then Tuxedo Computers. It's a company that built Linux laptops. Um, so they find it really interesting to look at that developer market. Um, U2D is a German company. They build software for event management, I think. Correct. Um, Contents, which is a quite well-known content management solution. They are based in Munich. And then Kondoku, which is local yes. to, to 
unique as well. I think. Yeah, correct. These are they they are supporting us with their um, with their recording of the sessions. Um, yeah. That's going to be interesting. They did a fa fantastic job last year, and um, yeah, it just worked. So uh, for every session, you can can see a, a fifty minute recording on Vimeo. Not a big deal. Wow. So that, that sounds like you end up with about 15 or 20 hours of, of training material if you, you know, on video. Yeah, on. indeed. Indeed. So um, it takes, uh, so seeing the one half of the talks directly and the other half uh, on the video really um, takes some time to get into these topics. Definitely. And you also, I, I think you get last year's recordings too. Is that right? Yes, that's right. So oh. people buying a ticket are getting the last year's recording also, uh, which means so they can see what, it's, what happened last year and uh, use this already to get the feel of the conference. What? Oh, so you get last, as soon as you sign up, you get last year's yeah, correct. recording. Wow. I, I think I forgot to ask you how much it costs to attend uh, CF Camp. Uh, the price for uh, CF Camp is uh, 330 euros, including that. Uh, this includes the completely the two days, including all the drink and foods all over the days, including dinner on the uh, on the first day. Um, well, basically that's it. So. Um, <laughs> There is, uh, it includes also a, a bag with uh, some swag and um, we are, we have a very interesting present for the speakers again this year and the attendees. Uh, so be surprised. And um, yeah, it's, it's definitely not expensive for two days, to be honest. Okay. So and for those who so don't much included. For those yeah. who are not used to spending money in euros, that's about 365 US dollars. So. Um, what a deal, just a dollar a day to get all this cold fusion goodness. Um, so tell us a bit more about, you said some, there was something special about the <clears> evening <throat> event. Is there, I didn't quite understand that. Is there a band playing? Or no, it's not a band. Show, Indeed, we, we could think about that for the next year, having a, a CFML band or something like yeah. that. No, what, um, what we had the, the last two years already, and it was really a fantastic show, is the famous Codemasters. Uh, this is the um, more or less the, the live video show uh, from uh, Mark Drew and Rob Dudley. They are doing the local host podcast about CFML and they are doing a game show for that evening. Uh, uh -huh. And we have two teams. We have uh, two teams competing against each other and uh, they have to answer questions and uh, they are all related to some CFML stuff and it's it was it was really a, a, a quite interesting thing. I remember they had uh, last year um, a quiz about sta HTTP status codes. So of course you know uh, what is a 404, um, but do you know what the the what was the T time HTTP uh, status code is and and stuff like that. And this is really um, it's just fun. It's really. Um, two hours, a lot of fun. Um, there are the recordings of the last year's shows on uh, the website. You can just see what, what happened there. And this is really, um, really fantastic. And this is also a very, very big thank you to Mark and Drew, uh, Mark and uh, uh, Rob. They, they are spending so much time in doing that. And it's, it's uh, absolutely fantastic. That's great. I mean, that reminds me of some of the quiz shows that were Cold Fusion based that we had at CF United, where we had, uh, you know, basically quiz shows with Cold Fusion questions. <laughs> oh, okay. So great that you're doing that. So I, I, I guess I should ask you, where, you know, if, if Cold Fusion developers listening or Cold Fusion managers, why should they come to CF Camp? Why should they come to CF Camp? Uh, first of all, I think um, the interesting thing about CF Camp is the variety of uh, talks we are going to offer for these two days. So as Kai already said, we have uh, some core talks about really CFML related stuff. 
but there are so many things around that um, you you need to know and need to see and uh, need to be aware about um, that it's quite interesting to to get a, a wrap up of uh, oh this technology exists and this is what I can do with that and it may help you in the next project so um, especially the the um, um, the documentation stuff for example so I don't know how much code I have seen without documentation. So maybe for the next project, just go ahead and start using what you learned at the conference. And the next thing is why you should come to CF campus. You are going to learn so many nice people. Um, it, was, it is really, it is, it, it's more, it's in this size, it's more about, it's more like a family reunion every year. It's not like, uh, you know, you're going to a conference uh, about PHP with uh, 2,000 people and you know three of them. Um, here at CF Camp, so the community is, is quite small compared to other communities that you know these people. And meanwhile, hey, it's your chance to see them live and in color instead of just a picture on Slack or something like that. It's really interesting, like when you said like CF Camp is a bit like a family reunion and that is true, right? And that's one of the drivers why I come back even from New Zealand for it. Right? It's like purely when you, look at, when you look at the conference size itself and at the fact that I could get the videos after the event, you think like, well, is a 24 hour flight worth it? for me, from my personal point of view. And I have to say it is, right? Because I enjoy hanging out with the people. I enjoy meeting the people from the European Cold Fusion community or CFML community that I used to work with for, I don't know, 10 years before I moved to New Zealand. And it, Michi is totally right. It is like a family reunion. And the other funny thing to, to notice is you actually grow older together in some way. <laughs> That's <laughs> true, <yes>. hilarious. <laughs> you know, when I think of like, Back about 10 years and look at, at photos from back then it's like oh wow we have become gray gray or hairless or you know various aging things that you can actually see it's really interesting and also it's a great chance to talk with the speakers and also you know the people from lucy and adobe and <clears throat> you know tell them what you like about cold fusion or, or what problems you're having and, and be able to get some quick answers so yeah, yeah. i think Definitely. the nice thing with with cf camp is particularly you have easy access to the people who work on lucy like the lucy engineers that's probably the easiest way to meet them in real life yeah. um similar to if you were to go to cf summit it's probably a good chance to catch up with adobe cold fusion engineering engineering people Oh, absolutely. I mean, the, you, they all fly out. Well, about 20 of them fly out there. I guess there's more in the team than that. Yeah. I so, think what is, what is worth to mention is that uh, we also have a fair, which means that uh, all these people, all the, the sponsors and, um, and speakers, are, yeah. you can catch up with them during the, the whole two days. It's not like they, that they are um, away after their, their talk. No, you have the chance to, to get directly to the Lucy booth and say, hey, I have this, this certain issue, um, what is the best way to get around, or I have an idea, or um, sorry, I have to complain because the feature um, X is, is missing or something like that. So um, that's really a great way to catch up with people and, um, and talk to them directly um, with your, maybe your personal kind of issue you have in your, in your application. So let's turn to some more general questions. Um, First of all, for both of you, why are you proud to use Cold Fusion in, in 2019? Well, I, I, I still think it's one of the most powerful and easiest to use languages that is still available. When I see what, what other kind of codes is, is um, running around, you, you see that, oh, ooh, yeah, that's a nice thing, but... Um, why do I need 45 lines of code in Java code uh, to send an email? Um, there is, you know, you're, if, you're, if you're using CFML, you, you know how it is. You, you just use one line of code that's called a, um, CFM, CFmail. And, you know, it's, it's just, just easy to get into. And it's still very, very powerful. Um, since 
the, the code is compiled to Java bytecode, you do not have any performance issues or things like that. So I think it's still one of the, the, the best languages you can use for development. I have a probably a more diversified view on it. Um, for example, <clears throat> with that, that example that Michi used with like 45 lines of Java code to send an email. That's true if you were to write that from scratch, right? But in all reality, as a Java developer, you would use a library to do that for you. And it would be one or two lines of code as well. However, that is kind of an interesting segue into what CFML, both Lucy and Confusion really are. They are abstraction layers over the JVM. That's really what it is from my point of view, basically. They are like a productivity abstraction layer and depending on what you want to achieve in your backend coding, they can be the perfect tool to do that for you. And in other instances, a different tool might be better. That's just what it is these days, right? Like, I mean, ColdFusion and Lucy are, from my point of view, good solutions, but they are not solutions for everything, right? In some instances, other technologies might be more appropriate. I mean, that's important to, to look at realistically. Um, when it comes to Adobe Cold Fusion and Lucy, I personally prefer Lucy, and I'm not shy about you know, telling people that. And that is because of the openness and the transparency of the solution as well as the development. Um, that is just more appropriate for a language and a server platform in 2019 from my point of view. Um, I find it hard to justify for myself and for clients to you know, spend money on a language, basically. It's tricky, right? Because every other language is free. Um, so Lucy provides a really nice option to work with CFML, don't have that licensing problem, have kind of an easy access to cloud because you can just freely deploy it to pretty much any cloud platform that you want. And that is kind of, you know, a modern way to develop backends for the web from my point of view. Cool. Yeah, it's um, interesting. I, I was talking to someone recently uh, about .NET, which in theory is quotes free but then they explained how Microsoft get you to pay out for like the IDE and for Windows Server and for SQL Server. <laughs> By the time you're done, you spent way more money than you kind of I remember. I remember many, many years ago when I started with ColdFusion, there was, there was a, an article from Ben Forta with the title, But It's Free. Yeah, oh, um, and, really? I should look for that. And it, that was, that was, that, that explained exactly what it what you what you just described so yes it's free but if you need that and that and that you just have to pay for licenses and libraries and things like that and this was all included in in uh, in adobe called fuji at that time already mm -hmm. so um that's that explains exactly the situation so um again if you if you need some special php stuff um yeah, you have to pay for that. Um, and that's, that's um, for all the languages. It's actually really interesting. So do, you, do we think Cold Fusion or CFML has changed from, from back then to today? Because what you just said, Michi, was like, you know, back then, Cold Fusion had all those things that in other tech you had to pay for. Is it still the same or have things kind of like, you know, it's, become I think closer to no, it's still the same because you you what you get in uh, in uh, Lucy is is really uh, so much functionality that is included. Uh, all the mail stuff, all the API stuff, all yeah. you know um, things like things like that are included already. Like um, simple things to generate RSS feeds or stuff like that. That is all included for free, mm -hmm. and. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's still the same. So the, the, the way of um, giving a powerful tool to the people um, didn't change since then. So yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. Cool. Now, as you know, I, I, I'm very interested in making Cold Fusion more alive, and that's why we have this podcast. And I wrote the book on that. So I'm curious, what, what do you think? What would it take to make Cold Fusion even more alive this year? I 
Go ahead. Do you want to go first? No, no, go okay. ahead. I think one of the biggest drivers for CFML to be relevant and to stay relevant is currently that whole modern CFML development movement, which is basically centered around stuff like command box, um, the easy, an easy way to install modules and libraries and get things set up in a modern way comparable to platforms like Node or modern Java with a REPL or Kotlin or you know, numerous other languages that have those features. So probably if, you, if someone was really looking into driving cold fusion and like you know, leveraging cold fusion or CFML for themselves, I would say the stuff that comes out of orders from a technical point of view is these days something you can't and should not avoid. That's kind of a must, more or less, which is you know good and bad, for obviously. It's good because they are doing amazing stuff. It's bad because a lot of things are centered around like one group of people, and that's always a bit risky, like in any, you know, in any scenario. What I think is missing to get uh, CFML more alive is um, an application which is so easy and, uh, and useful that everybody wants to, to use and have it. Why is PHP so popular? Because of an application like WordPress. So there are so many things that you can do with, uh, with WordPress and, and uh, stuff around and plugins and uh, thousands and thousands of, of layouts so that everybody says, hey, okay, I'm going to use that application. And yes, it's based on, on PHP. So if you have an application that is uh, using um, uh, CFML in the background, I think this would, would totally help the community to get um, CFML in a on a really wider base and saying this is you also need the hosting uh, problem solved so if you want to get uh, lucy or adobe cold fusion up and running you need a special hosting partner with php you could just go ahead and snip and say okay here i take the next one that's uh, that's the easy way with CFML, it's uh, a bit more difficult to set up. You may maybe a Docker container or, or, or things like that. So um, the entry level needs to be more easier with uh, startup and running stuff. I would disagree with that, actually. I okay. think like who's, who's using classic hosting these days? I mean, most people have for quite a while moved on into some sort of a cloud deployment scenario. Let it be AWS or Google Cloud or whatever else, right? And it doesn't make that much of a difference if you want to host Lucy in the cloud or run Lucy in a cloud through Docker, for example, mm -hmm. or some other containerizer, or if you want to run PHP or Python or something like that in the cloud. So I think that hosting argument that we need CFML hosting companies that was probably more relevant like five years ago. I think it's less relevant today. And with the killer app, I would agree to some extent, though. Um, there is just nothing that sticks out where people say like, even like, hey, this thing is written in CFML. That's such a cool technology. I want to use CFML for my next project. I wouldn't, you know, WordPress is a good solution. And it's a big solution. It has its problems but it can serve as an inspiration to people. I don't necessarily think CFML needs a killer app as such. So we don't need a block system or like a killer CMS or a forum or something like that. But it's more that inspirational bit that is missing from my point of view. People need something big and visible to look up to and say like, I can achieve this or something mm -hmm. similar, right? And there's not much around um, in that field when you look at the CFML application market. And part of the problem is that people don't talk that much about what they built with it, right? Like, I mean, particularly in commercial land, people might be quite shy and like not communicate that extremely loud. Um, but even in open source land, people don't necessarily, you know, share big solutions they've built. And I have a customer, you know, that has, they, they have a massive, CFML based deployment. Um, but you know, no one or hardly anyone would know about that. Yeah? It's just like what it is. It 
happens behind the scenes quite often. Cool. Well, thanks for coming on the show and uh, looking forward to CF Camp uh, in Munich in, in a few weeks. Anything else you want to say to people before you go? Well, I'm uh, really happy to welcome everyone at uh, CF Camp. So um, I already um, have the list uh, here who's attending and I'm really too happy to see um, again, even if it's only once a year, um, some friends. And as I said, it's for me personally, it's more family reunion. Uh, so I think my last words would be, if I can make it from New Zealand, and if I can talk people from Australia coming to Munich, then if you're in Europe, get your ass over there. Jesus Christ. <laughs> not that hard. Well, great. Well, thanks for both for coming on the show today. <laughs> you're you. welcome. Thanks, Thank you very thanks much. Okay. Goodbye.